In today's review of the RX 6600 from AMD, we're going to be comparing this to the RTX 3060 as well as the RX 6600 XT. And we'll also throw in undervolting and overclocking and seeing if the $329 price point that AMD is suggesting, and I did use quotations there because I think we all know that AMD is not going to be able to deliver this card at this suggested price point, just like what we saw with the RX 6600 XT, where crypto miners ended up pretty much buying all those cards up when they were close to that MSRP. And it only lasted at max for a few hours before the prices increased. However, we'll talk about the market and the card a little bit later. Let's get on to those gaming benchmarks where we've tested at 1080p at either ultra or max settings. And the first title you will see here is Battlefield 5, where the RX 6600 does score a sizable victory over the RTX 3060. And you may notice the 6600 XT is pulling out quite a fair bit ahead of the 6600. And this has to do with the makeup of the card itself. Even though they share the exact same silicon under the cooler, they do have more stream processors enabled on the 6600 XT. And also the memory speeds have been capped to 1750 megahertz, which is then quadrupled to give you the effective memory speeds. And that exists at 1750 megahertz on the RX 6600 versus 2000 megahertz on the RX 6600 XT. However, if you do like tuning, your graphics card, then you can up the memory speeds to 1900 megahertz, which I do suggest everyone does. However, this is a hard limit imposed via the BIOS on this particular graphics card. However, if you are into overclocking, you can raise these speeds, but you will be met with, unfortunately, a limit of 1900 megahertz, as opposed to the 6600 XT, which can go from 2000 megahertz to 2400. Though onto F1 2020, here is where the 3060 and the 6600 start to trade blows, scoring very similar performance. And then after that, the 6600 XT and the 3060 Ti scoring higher performance. Though onto Far Cry 6, a recently released title, this is where Nvidia does even the score from Battlefield where they're scoring a victory with the 3060 over the RX 6600 and then the 6600 XT then falls to the 3060 Ti. Then in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we do see a victory for the 6600 over the 3060. Though the last title we will pull up here is Borderlands 3 where the 3060 does edge out the 6600, then that's then beaten by the 6600 XT, and that's then beaten by the 3060 Ti. Though just like the RX 6600 XT, the 6600 is a phenomenal undervolter, and if you are into the most power efficient, at least desktop gaming, then this card, just like the 6600 XT, will deliver some impressive watts for the performance if you want to save power. Though also another interesting thing was when it came to overclocking, the most gains to be had out of this graphics card actually came from the power limits, which were imposed from the get-go. So just like those memory limitations, I did see a power limitation, which limited the card, at least from the raw power consumption from the graphics card to 100 watts. However, you can raise this 20%, which then gives you 120 watts, which still falls behind the 6600 XT, but you will get a sizable uplift in performance if you decide to do some basic overclocking. Though if you choose to overclock or undervolt, I feel like you will get better price performance than what this card is offering out of the box. Though touching on the ray tracing, this is where the RX 6600 doesn't do too well. I wouldn't say it's really AMD's generation for ray tracing performance. And in fact, the Nvidia card, the RTX 3060, does offer better value if you are looking to play games with ray tracing enabled. You also do get the DLSS 2.0 features on the RTX 3000 series card, but AMD has tried to counter this by offering FSR. 
Though for me personally, I always try to play games at their native resolution. And so when we look at the 3060 versus the 6600, we can see that they actually perform quite similar. And coincidentally, they also share the same so-called MSRP. The one to that $329 price point. Here is where unfortunately, just like the RX 6600 XT, I feel like this card, if it is in stock, at close to this MSRP, I would actually interlude in this review and say, buy it if it's close to the MSRP, especially if you're a gamer, because just like the RX 6600 XT review I did, I felt that the prices were going to go much higher than MSRP. And even if there was a card that was available for close to MSRP price, it didn't sit on the shelves for any longer than a few minutes, if not a few hours, depending on which country you live in. One more point is that the RTX 3060, this card currently, even with the low hash rate mining version in Australia, the cheapest you can get this for is 900 Aussie dollars, which is still far above Nvidia's 500 Aussie dollar price point that they were suggesting this card come in at. So as long as cryptocurrency miners keep buying up these graphics cards, unfortunately, these cards are gonna be coming in at higher price points than MSRP. But speaking of the crypto mining performance, unfortunately, just like the RX 6600 XT, when I did the tests here, it showed that it was giving about $1.60 per day, which means that crypto miners are constantly gonna be looking to purchase these cards, especially around $320, which would give them a 200 day return on investment. And the power consumption whilst doing this is also extremely good. In fact, the RX 6600 is one of the, if not the, most efficient mining graphics card out there. So until this misery ends, or if you are watching this video in the future and crypto mining profitability has completely sunk off the face of the earth, which I'm hoping happens sooner than later because PC gaming just doesn't feel the same as it once did before this crypto mining ever happened, I would say that this card right here at $329 is a decent buy. It's not the best choice I've seen, but also not the worst. Where this is the Swift 210 edition and putting this through the paces of the temperature and noise tests, we can see out of the box, it likes to go to an automatic speed of 76%. And this will give out roughly 44 decibels of noise. Though when I manually tuned it to 60%, this was giving out much better noise and the temperatures weren't all that different. Moving up to 80% does give you slightly more noise, does drop the temperatures a slight amount, and then going to 100% is simply unbearable in terms of the noise and also the temperatures weren't that much better than the out of the box settings. So for me personally, I would set this card to manual 60% and enjoy lower noise as well as a decent gaming experience. But speaking of the graphics card itself, at the back we have three display ports as well as an HDMI 2.1. And this card with its dimensions measures in at 245 mil times 46 times 129, weighing in a little over 600 grams. Now there is two 100 mil fans as well as a metal backplate, a VBIOS selection switch and an eight pin power in. Though with all that out of the way, it's now time for a short and sweet conclusion with the RX 6600. And here's where we're gonna say if we were comparing it to 2019 standards, the $329 price point would be mediocre. Though looking at what we're faced with in 2021, if you can get this card for 329 USD or somewhere close to it, and you really wanna play games, at least with good performance at 1080p, then it will be a solid choice. Though I feel like paying anything over 30% MSRP in this market is a straight ripoff. So I wouldn't pay any more personally than roughly $400 for this card. And I hope that a lot of retailers can hold this card in stock under that price point. Though until then, if these cards hover well above that $400 price point, I personally wouldn't be buying one or I wouldn't recommend people be buying a graphics card with this performance at such a ridiculously high price. Anyhow guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's review of the RX 6600 XFX Merc 210. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know 
in the comments section below, what do you think of this launch right here from AMD? Do you think it's a decent option? If so, yes. If not, why not? Love reading your thoughts and opinions. As always, just like this question of the day, which comes from Edwin K. And they ask, is it also compatible with Windows 11? Now they're talking about a budget 18 core. And I know you might be thinking budget and 18 cores, but that's exactly what we did in a recent video. I'll put the link up here. And we paired that with some other used parts. And this build will currently work with Windows 11, but Microsoft does keep moving the goalposts backwards and forwards with Windows 11 and what to expect. So if we are referring to the Windows 11 final release, then I'm not entirely sure if this will work with that final release. And this is basically a Haswell generation Xeon. But as soon as it is released, I will let you guys know. Until then, peace out for now. And if you've stayed this far, then be sure to hit that sub button and ring that bell if you want to see the Tech Yes content as soon as it drops. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.